It's wonderful to be together for the feast of the presentation of the Lord because it's the 2nd of February, so it doesn't always fall on a Sunday where, when we're together like this as a community, but it does this year. So we're remembering, as we heard at the beginning of Mass, how Jesus, as the firstborn son, is consecrated to the Lord, and also how Mary went to the temple for the ritual of purification after her birth. After Jesus' birth, not her birth. (laughs) That would have been very miraculous, wouldn't it? (laughs) Although there are stories, I'll tell you them after Mass. Let me give you three images um, just to reflect on this great feast day. And they're actually three meetings, three encounters. And just see what what they mean to you and how they might help you. The first one might surprise you. I want you to go back to the Garden of Eden. So that heartbreaking moment, just after the fall, Adam and Eve in the garden, and there's this beautiful and, as I say, heartbreaking line when it says, they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the cool of the evening, and they hid from him. They heard the Lord coming by. Isn't it poetic? In the cool of the evening, but they hid from him. And I would call this the double tragedy of the fall. It's not just the sin, the fall itself. It's then hiding from the God who made them and who loved them into existence and could have healed and saved them at that moment if he'd wanted to and if perhaps they'd been there to greet him and there's a paradox then that runs through the whole of Old Testament history through the whole of human history and actually through the human heart yours and mine of how one part of us is longing and searching for God but the other part of us is hiding from him ashamed and afraid it's like don't know if you've ever done this dialing a number on a phone someone you're desperate to talk to and you dial the number but it's also someone that you're terrified of talking to for some reason and as soon as it starts ringing you press the cancel button and hang up (laughs) yeah let's just do the confession thing and admit later if we've ever done that um But do you see the the paradox, the tension, wanting the encounter, but being afraid of it, and being torn back and forward? And this is us. This is us. It's the longing and the hiding. Not the one or the other. It almost defines us as fallen human beings. The longing and the hiding. So the second image, then is to come to today's feast, but to give you a very concrete image, it's the old man Simeon holding the child Jesus in his arms today in the temple. It's a beautiful human encounter, an elderly person with an innocent child. I just think of my own father, for example, um, just holding his youngest granddaughter, my niece Martha, just a few days after she was born. And I'm sure you've got many images of this, this tenderness of the elderly meeting the young and all the innocence and all the knowingness as well. They're both there in that embrace. But Simeon isn't just a tender old man. He represents in this gospel all of the longing of the Jewish people, the longing that stretches back to the Garden of Eden. That's why I started there. All of the longing of God's people, of the human race, to meet our Saviour. Simeon represents the longing of Adam and Eve, the longing of you and me. And in Jesus... God comes to meet that longing in the innocence of a human child so that, as it were, in that temple, in that moment, there is nowhere to hide. And we realise with Simeon that it's not just our muddled and confused search for God, 
It's God's search for us. It's his light coming into the world. Perhaps the most important word in the whole gospel today is the tiny word now. When Simeon says, now you can let your servant go in peace. It comes into our Western tradition in the, the simple Latin word nunc. We call this prayer the nunc dimittis. And let's, let's make it a bit more romantic, the word. It's not just now, it's at last. It's finally. It's after all this time. Now. At last I found him. At last he has found me. Never forget that every single person you meet is longing for God. A deep, profound longing. It might not be clear, it might not be in our religious Christian language, but that is what is at the heart of every person from Adam and Eve to the end of time. It's something we learned yesterday on our pilgrimage, some of us, when we went to visit the Jesuits in Mount Street. When Father Simon the Jesuit was asked, what's the secret of Ignatius of the spiritual exercises? He said it was Ignatius's search for God. His longing to find God. And when, if you can ever say this, he did find him in those mystical experiences in um, Manresa, he spent the whole of the rest of his life longing for others to have their longing to find God fulfilled. The longing is infectious and the finding is infectious. And this is why we've been thinking about evangelization so much recently here in the chaplaincy. It's not to impose our faith onto others in a kind of imperialistic rampage. It's because we believe, we know, that everyone is searching for God. Everyone. Even if it's in a confused and unacknowledged and undefined way. And we long for them to see the light that we have seen. Because we know that it will be such an unexpected gift for them. A revelation. We know that deep down they are longing no less than we are. And the final, the third image for you to take away... And again, you might be surprised at this on this feast day. It's the priest at Mass at the moment of consecration. You see this every Sunday. Holding the body of Christ in his hands and raising it above the altar. Holding up the chalice for your worship and veneration. Do you see the connection between the feast day and the Mass. Because at every Mass, right now, Christ is presented in our temple, the chapel at Newman House, in our case, in our church. The priest, like Simeon, holds him in his arms, tenderly, affectionately. And you, each of you, the Christian faithful, as you come for Holy Communion, you are Simeon, meeting him, holding him in your heart, the same child as this feast day. But there's much more, because Jesus didn't just come into the temple in Jerusalem on the feast of the presentation. At his death and resurrection and ascension, the feast of Easter, he went through the veil of the Jewish temple into the divine temple of heaven, into the Godhead itself. So there is a double movement at Mass. Christ coming to be with us, just as he did in the temple, in the presentation. But then taking us with him into the temple of heaven, lifting us up with him in his sacrifice on the cross, in his resurrection, and especially in his ascension. Never forget that the altar is a celebration of Christ's ascension, his entry into heaven. So do you see why the Mass is so important? It's not just an add-on to the Gospel. 
it's the fulfilment of this feast day and of the whole Christian faith actually. Do you see why the English martyrs gave their lives so that they could celebrate the Holy Mass each Sunday? That they were willing to be dragged down Oxford Street between, behind the horses and carts and taken to their deaths at Marble Arch? Do you see why the tabernacle here by the altar is such a great gift to us and why the light shines there perpetually in the candle? to show that the same Christ who presented himself in the temple is here with us at each moment. Do you see why people long to come to Mass, even in the weekdays, if they're free, to meet him, to be with him, and to have that light shine into their lives every day and every moment? What an amazing God we have that comes to be with us in the humanity of Jesus, that brings us with his humanity into heaven and that wants to bring us with him into heaven not just 2,000 years ago but every time we come to celebrate the Holy Mass.